Hi, I'm Chad, and this is a sample video tutorial from my online InDesign course that has over 13 hours of helpful instruction. In this complete guide to InDesign, you'll design a poster, a lookbook, an annual report, and much more as you master InDesign. Check out the link in the description for more information. Thanks! When we're designing in InDesign, we might come up with some kind of conflict with our colors, called an out-of-gamut error, and it's important to know what that is and also what to do about it. So open up a new document or just open up the annual report InDesign file. And let's just draw out two shapes here. So I selected the rectangle tool, just hold shift for a perfect square if we want that. And then with the selection tool here, press alt on the PC or option on the Mac and click and drag. So we duplicate it. So we've got two squares here. Now with this first one, I'm going to apply this CMYK swatch. We can see that it's named after its mixture here. So cyan is at 100 and everything else is at zero. Now I'm going to click this one over here and I'll click this up here and it applies it. However, I'm going to right click over that and go to duplicate swatch. And so we have a similar one here. That's the same exact color for now, but I'm going to right click over that and let's go to swatch options. And so instead of CMYK, Let's go ahead and change that to RGB. And you'll notice right away, we've got this warning sign here, out of gamut warning, click to correct. So if I don't correct that and I press OK, if we export this as a PDF and we look at it on the screen, it'll look fine. But if we send it to print, it will not print correctly. It will just look close to that, but not quite the same. So if I go to swatch options again and click that to correct it, now it changes it slightly. So these RGB levels here are compatible with a CMYK mixture. So if I just click and drag this over here, red to zero, green to lower, notice this bright saturated color. This can be displayed on the screen as an RGB color, but this cannot be printed just like this. So this whole range here will not print in CMYK mode. So if I had something like that and I click that, it's got to add a little bit more red. Adjust these two so we have something similar. So the CMYK colors look a little bit darker, not as saturated, a little flatter, because they're inks. For CMYK, it cannot print certain RGB colors. So for example, if I bring red way over here and bring green up, see now we have that again. So generally these brighter colors that are really saturated cannot be printed in CMYK mode. A commercial printer, in other words, they're using CMYK printing. So this will not look like this on paper. We'll have to click it and this is what will print as far as adjusting this RGB swatch to match something that can be printed in CMYK mode. So we got this out of gamut error, but what is a gamut? Out of the color spectrum, only certain colors can be seen on the screen and also printed. So you see here on the left, that area in the middle there, that black line, that's actually color temperature. And then the rest is that spectrum. Now that's not 100% accurate though, because the area on the edges there cannot be displayed on the screen. So it's just a similar color. So on the right there, that's a typical screen display and the gamut of colors that it can produce. So here are the gamuts for different color spaces and CMYK is technically a color mode or a color model. But if you see here, Pro Photo RGB, that would be used for photography, and it has a wide range of available colors. Adobe RGB also has a lot, and much more than sRGB. And sRGB has a little bit different color space than CMYK, as we can see there. So there are certain colors that will print in CMYK, but not be available on screen with sRGB. And then there are certain colors that can be seen on screen, with the sRGB or the Adobe RGB, but they cannot be printed on paper with the ink using CMYK process printing. So Adobe RGB, sRGB, and Profoto RGB are examples of color spaces. Uh, they're also called color profiles, and they're all within the RGB model, red, green, blue. Some printers like the Adobe RGB because it can convert better over to CMYK than sRGB because it's so saturated with the sRGB color space. So we could keep going on about color, but I don't want to get off on a rabbit trail there because this course is focused on InDesign, so I want to keep it focused on the context of InDesign. Color is a science, 
There's a huge background to it as far as color perception, color reproduction, and so on. And in terms of InDesign, we're designing either for the screen or print. So with this image here, RGB on the left, red, green, blue, and then CMYK on the right, those are comparable colors. But notice they're more muted on the right with CMYK. And then RGB, they're more saturated and brighter. Now, you're looking at this on a screen, though. So think about that. The CMYK on the right here has been converted to RGB mode as far as being on the screen. So if I printed this screen right here, it would all have to be converted to CMYK color mode if it was going to a commercial printer. So that area on the left would look closer to the area on the right because it wouldn't be on a screen to be printed out. I do need to point out that photographic printers, for example, they are RGB devices. So they have photosensitive paper and they actually print with RGB. So the CMYK doesn't apply to that, but I've been talking in the context of commercial printers, local print shops, or even large chains. They use the CMYK. When I worked at a magazine, they used CMYK. When I worked at a newspaper, they used CMYK as well. Packaging, they'll use CMYK. Inkjet printers, not the commercial printers, but just ones you can buy at a store. They do use cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks, and they can also have additional inks to have more available color. So they're technically CMYK printers, but unless you're using a PostScript raster image processor, those inkjet printer drivers are actually receiving RGB data. So local printer drivers, when we're printing to a personal printer, like an inkjet printer, even though they have CMYK inks, the data is actually sent as RGB. So that makes it even more complicated. But the principle here is that we want to look at it on paper and test it if that's the intent. If we're printing this out as a photo or a magazine or brochure or restaurant menu, look at it on paper and look at a proof. Make sure it looks like how we want it to look like as far as the color goes. I'll talk about Pantone products too, where we can see those uncoated or uncoated paper physically before we even decide a color scheme. And then we know what it will look like when it's printed onto that paper. Even though some printers will be slightly different depending on the amount of ink, even temperature, different variables like that, but it's a lot closer than comparing an RGB color on screen and then it's comparable color that's printed, especially when it's not in that CMYK color model. So that's what that out of gamut error warning means. We need to click that and correct it so that it can print out closer to what we're seeing here. Thanks and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, I'm Chad and this is a sample video tutorial from my online InDesign course that has over 13 hours of helpful instruction. In this complete guide to InDesign, you'll design a poster, a lookbook, an annual report, and much more as you master InDesign. Check out the link in the description for more information. Thanks!